Entamoeba histolytica is a protozoan parasite that, in most cases, harmlessly resides in the colon. However, it has the capability to cause dysentery, colitis, and liver abscess. The World Health Organization, the WHO, considers amoebiasis to be one of the major health problems of developing countries, surpassed only by malaria and schistosomiasis for death caused by parasitic infection. Approximately 100 million annual cases of amoebic dysentery, colitis, and liver abscess result in 100,000 deaths occurring worldwide. These infections are found mainly in developing countries such as India, Africa, and parts of Central and South America, where sanitation methods are not as highly developed. However, infections are also an issue in developed countries, with patients usually being migrants from and travelers to infected areas. The first proven case of amoebic dysentery was made in 1875 by Fedor Loesch in St. Petersburg, Russia, where he originally called it amoeba coli. This organism was later renamed Entamoeba histolytica by Fritz Schaudin, a German zoologist, in 1903. Schaudin was the first to differentiate between Entamoeba histolytica and its harmless counterpart, Entamoeba coli. He later died in 1906 when he underwent emergency surgery due to an amoebic abscess from a self-inflicted infection. The first case of North American amoebiasis was reported by Sir William Osler in 1890 after he observed amoeba in stool and abscess fluid from a physician who had previously resided in Panama. The life cycle of Entamoeba histolytica begins when cysts and trophozoites, which are immature cysts, are passed through the colon and expelled in feces. The cysts are typically discovered in formed stool, with trophozoites being found in diarrheal stool. Infection then occurs when an individual ingests mature cysts through fecally contaminated food, water, or hands. Once the cyst is ingested and reaches the small intestine, the contained trophozoites are released and continue to travel to the large intestine. Once they have arrived at the large intestine, the trophozoites multiply through binary fission and produce cysts. Both the cysts and the trophozoites are then passed through the intestine and expelled in the feces. Because of the protection the trophozoites receive through the cell walls of the matured cysts, they can survive anywhere from days to weeks in the outside environment and are therefore responsible for the transmission of the parasite. Trophozoites that are passed in the stool are rapidly destroyed once outside the body, and even if ingested, would not survive exposure to the gastric environment. Transmission can also occur through exposure to fecal matter during anal sexual contact, in which case not only cysts, but also trophozoites could become infectious. The life cycle of Entamoeba histolytica is nicely summed up in this clip. The amoeba starts its life cycle as a free living cyst in the water. When a human drinks contaminated water, the cyst enters the gut. Here, the amoeba emerges from the cyst, divides, feeds, and then reinsists. When the cyst passes out of the body into the water, the life cycle is complete. Amoebic dysentery, which is also known as intestinal amoebiasis, is an infectious and chronic disease characterized by inflammation of the intestine, abdominal pain, and diarrhea with stools that often contain blood and mucus. Symptoms may occur, then lie dormant for a while before recurring. In rare cases, the infection can also spread through the bloodstream and settle in the liver, lungs, brain, and other organs, causing much more serious problems. Amoebic colitis is much more rare, with amoebic dysentery accounting for 90% of all entamoeba histolytica functions. These symptoms are similar to dysentery, consisting of mild to moderate abdominal pain and frequent diarrhea containing blood and mucus. Colitis can develop into numerous stages, from superficial erosion of the colonic mucosa 
which is the internal lining of the intestines, to deep flask-shaped ulcers with edges that undermine the mucosa and extend deep into the muscular lining and tissue surrounding the colon. Colitis can be diagnosed by conducting a colonoscopy or visual examination of the colon through the use of a small camera called a colonoscope and taking ulcer samples. Here you will see multiple small and medium-sized white amoebic ulcers in the colon. The colonoscope is used to view and harvest some of these ulcers for pathology, which were tested and found positive for amoebiasis in this patient. You can see the colonoscope extend and the claw grasp and retract, pulling the ulcer away from the colon wall. Extraintestinal disease may occur at the same time as amoebic colitis, but usually occurs with no abdominal discomfort and stool samples that do not contain any cysts. These extraintestinal cases occur most often in adult males. This disease is characterized by the growth of an abscess on the liver with a dull discomfort developing over a two to four week period, usually occurring in the right half of the chest and right shoulder tip. But in rare cases, the entamoeba histolytica will actually attack the intestinal wall, eating through the tissue. From there, it travels in the blood to the liver. Here, the entamoeba feeds on the liver cells, thus creating an abscess of dead material, liquefying the liver. Unfortunately, right now there is no vaccine available for this parasite, and even though there is effective treatment available, Entamoeba histolytica is a persistent problem in today's world. Therefore, a search has begun to find a vaccine for these deadly diseases. Recent studies have suggested that mucosal immunity could provide some protection against recurrent intestinal infection with Entamoeba histolytica. But there is also contradictory evidence about protective immunity after an amoebic liver abscess has occurred. Oral vaccines that use amoebic antigens, co-administered with some form of cholera toxin, have been developed and tested in animals for mucosal immunogenicity. Although there has been significant progress on multiple fronts, there are still unanswered questions regarding the effectiveness of these vaccines in man and, so far, no tests have been performed on humans.